Well, welcome to today's podcast. I love when I teach about the gifts of the Spirit because it's like opening up that rim that is so close to the heart of God. There is that rim that is so real. I call it the spiritual rim. It's a natural rim, but there is that spiritual rim where experiences, where you talk with God, where you commune with Him. It's that intimate fellowship. I was just thinking Sunday service, we had a move of God and I was just meditating when I go home on Sunday afternoons. I say, I'm really not worth two cents. I'm either going to be so thrilled with God that I'm going to laugh and cut up or I'm going to be so thrilled with him that I'm just the opposite, that I just weep for joy and just watching God move. I think about awesome God that created all things that is so in love with us that he wants to help us. And they're all different means. Of course, the word of God, we always, everything has to be based on this word. Everything we believe has to be based on the word. And I love different books that I can read about people I know or people that other people knew and about how God used them and how God flow. This is a book by Reverend and Mrs. J.R. Goodwin. I enjoyed this book because it. They were Kenneth Hagin's pastors. And in this book is all different experiences they had with the Lord. You only have a few things that are available on YouTube by them, but you learn. Learning that rim of the Spirit is not something that you can always read from a book. The Bible talks about having our senses exercised to discern good and evil versus evil by reason of use. There is that rim of the Spirit where we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit that you can learn some information from a book, but you never totally understand God. You can't always explain what He does or why He does it. It'll never be contrary to the Word. But we've been talking about the gifts of the Spirit, and this one that we're going to be talking about the gift of faith and the gift of working of miracles as well as gifts of healing. I love the gift of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. I love them because you really tap into the heart of God when he says something, think about it. God who created all things is so in love with you, so in love with you, that he ordained for there to be gifts of the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, in which he can speak into your life. And one word from God can change your very life. But he doesn't just want to speak into your life. He wants, if you need him to, to move in your life. And so many times there are things that happen that is beyond our normal ability to believe God for it, even as a result of studying the word. So God, as wise God that we serve, said, I'm going to have one of the gifts to be the gift of faith as well as working of miracles and gifts of healing. Because I think these gifts are action gifts. They're powerful, powerful action gifts. And then I can look at my life and I wonder, where in the world would I be today if it wasn't for that gift operating? You know, we study a lot. I've always been what some people call a Haganite. I say, yes, I am. Brother Kenneth Hagan opened the word to me like I'd never never understood before. And he's noted as one of these, they call them faith preachers. He doesn't just teach faith, but he was called by God to teach that generation and all future generations, if they'll listen, how to believe God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So why teach something else until you can get the people to where they know how to believe God? I tell you where I'd be today. I wouldn't be in the ministry. I'll tell you where I'd be if it wasn't for God and the gifts of the Spirit and how, learning how they move, how to operate. I'd be a woman without a husband. I'd be a woman without children. I certainly wouldn't be in the ministry, but because of these gifts of the Spirit operating, not just in my life, but in other people's lives, and God used them to bless me, to help me, to protect me, to cause me to believe God in times that I needed to believe God. God is absolutely amazing. 
Because I always said this way, serving God is the greatest adventure that you'll ever have. Because you don't always know what he's going to do, but he's going to do something for us. He's going to help us because he loves us. Now, I'm going to read this in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 9. He's listing the gifts of the Spirit, and he says, To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings, plural, by the same Spirit. To another, working of miracles by the same Spirit. Then he lists the other gifts. I'm not going through them because we've already covered them. The gift of faith, I wrote this down, is a gift that does, I said this way, that is really, very rarely fully understood because it's a different than the general faith. It's different than saving faith. This is supernatural faith, one in which you would not, without this gift in operation, be able to believe God. But with this gift in operation, it is a gift of the Spirit. It enables you to believe God way beyond your understanding. It's a gift of faith. Like I said, general faith is you learn to believe God. Most people have general faith. In other words, I'll say it this way. If I've sat on that couch 50 times, 51, it's still general faith because I already know it's going to hold me up. The things you just know that's going to be. Or you learn, you see principles in his word, word, and so you just know that God will do it. That's general faith. And saving faith, I said this way, is the faith gives everybody that by that faith you can be saved. You can have faith to be saved. And so, but it's different than the gift. It's different than the gift. I wrote this down. The gift of faith can be defined as faith imparted by the Spirit of God for, here's the reasons, protection in times of danger, divine divine provision, or the ability to impart or receive blessing. Now, I like it when I said protection in times of danger. Somebody showed up one time at my house, and they wanted to see the person that was in my house, and I just opened the door and stood out, came out, and I said, no, they're not coming out. I turned, he took some steps back, he got a baseball bat and tried to hit me. I had such calmness, it never, I just knew he couldn't hit me. I just had that kind of faith. He just could not hit me because I belonged to God. So he starts swinging and I march him all the way to his car and tell him to get in his car and leave. Only when I turned around, walked back in my house and shut the door and I said, what in the world did you do? I didn't yell one time for my husband to come out. I just knew he could not hit me with a baseball bat because I was a child of God. Now, folks, there is nothing in the world but supernatural faith. That was the gift of faith in operation. So you see it in the Bible. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Get from here and go eastward and hide by the brook Sherath, which flows into Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink of the brook, because I've commanded the ravens to feed you. Now, ravens didn't feed people. Ravens worked to feed themselves from, I'll say, from morning to late at night. Those were the type of birds that ravens were. And yet, he says, I want you to go here, because I have commanded ravens to feed you. Now, in the natural, we think, Go where you know people. Somebody will give you something. Everybody knew who Elijah was. You're going to find somebody. You're not even going to hardly walk very far. For somebody's going to give you protection. Or they're going to give you provision. But God tells him, no, go way over here. Now, for him to be obedient to God had to be a gift of faith. Because God didn't tell him, I've hid food here. I've commanded this person. He said, I've commanded ravens, which would be far beyond what anybody could believe, that ravens is going to bring you food every morning and every night. The one the place ravens took food. They ate it. But it had to be a gift of faith in operation. I like it because the gift of faith receives the miracle. You don't do anything. Your job is just to believe God. 
why God works it out. Now that's exciting when you think about that. You think about when you need a job and God said, I've given you a job. You're going to get it on such and such a day. It takes faith to wait till that day comes. But many times it's just supernatural faith. When I think about Peter being put in jail, are you listening to me? He was supposed to be killed the next day, but guess what? He went to sleep and rested because he knew that God would protect him. God will protect you supernaturally, sovereignly. I'll never forget when I was a young girl, I was staying in my apartment by myself. My husband had went away military for several weeks. And so I started to go home that night. And all at once, I didn't feel led to go home. I thought, ah, I'm going to go spend the night with my mother. I came back the next day and somebody had been to my apartment, used an ax and chopped the lock to where they could get in my house. Now, that was not the gift of faith because I knew none of that was going on. So I can't say, man, the gift of faith, it didn't operate. It was God protecting me sovereignly, supernaturally protecting me by the leading and the guidance of the Spirit of God. You see the difference? I didn't use faith there. I just was led of God to go somewhere different. So you can't disobey the leading of God said, well, I can do that because God will protect me. No, you follow the leading and the guidance of God. God told me through my pastor, he said, Datha, don't stop at night and go in places. If you're leaving at night, drive all the way home. Well, I have obeyed that, and that's probably been five years, maybe even longer. Why? Because God didn't say, go ahead and stop at night and I'll protect you. He said, Datha, don't stop at night. Only one time did I break it. And I thought, God, I don't know what to do. These roads are dark here, but I am on empty. I was careless. I am so sorry. I thank you for divinely protecting me. And God, it would be easier for me to believe you to divinely protect me if I stop and get gas. So I stop my car, I get out, and I see this man running toward me. And all at once, then it dawns on me, that's my son-in-law. He doesn't live anywhere near there. What is he doing there? He don't know. He just went that way and left, I'll say, left the grid. And I knew it was God having him go there to divinely protect me. But that wasn't a gift of faith. It wasn't a gift of faith. A gift of faith would have had no concern at all. Are you listening to me? They would say, well, I know I can do it. But see, I knew I had not obeyed God. If you want divine protection, you learn how to be obedient to God. Do what he says to do. Don't do what he don't say for you to do. Well, I hope this is helping you to find a gift of faith just receives a miracle. A gift of working of miracles, you work the miracle. God bless you. See you again.